This next virus video is all about the biosynthesis step of animal viral multiplication. And so remember the goal of the biosynthesis step is to make a lot of viral nucleic acid, whatever its genetic material may be, RNA or DNA, and to make all the viral proteins that the new viruses are going to need. Right? Because the goal is to start with one virus infecting a cell and then to make many, many more uh, new viruses. Okay. And so, as you'll see later, there are some viruses, you know, will actually end up making hundreds and hundreds of new virions. Okay. By the time this cycle is done. And so, they need to mass produce viral nucleic acid and viral proteins so that there's enough for these hundreds and hundreds of new viruses to to form. So all of this happens in the biosynthesis step. But as I mentioned at the end of the last video, the details of the biosynthesis step are dependent upon the type of nucleic acid that the virus has, okay? Because the host always has DNA as the genetic material. And so um, some of the RNA viruses sometimes are a little bit more complex because uh, they have to bring their own proteins uh, to the game to make sure that they have everything they need to complete this step. So, <clears throat> excuse me, very briefly, you don't have to memorize each of these uh, detailed steps. It's just to kind of show you big picture of what's happening. Um, you'll notice that <clears throat> starting in the center of the picture, number one, attachment, as we already know, right? The virus is attaching and entering the cell and then uncoding. Okay, but let's focus on the biosynthesis part. So notice with the DNA viruses, they need the machinery from the host cell that's going to allow it to create RNA from that DNA, the process that we'll learn about later this week. And then it's gonna use that RNA to create the proteins that it needs. Well, the host machinery um, to take a piece of DNA and make RNA is found in the nucleus, okay? of the eukaryotic hosts, for instance. And so um, that's where the initial viral DNA replication is going to occur. But the ribosomes and other materials needed to make proteins are actually out in the cytoplasm. So you'll notice that once um, viral RNA is made, it's gonna go out to the cytoplasm where it can then use the host's nucleotides and ribosomes and amino acids to build all those viral proteins and then uh, self-assemble and release, okay? So again, um, it's not quite as complicated for DNA viruses, for most DNA viruses, because the host that they're infecting also has DNA. So um, there's not a lot of extra complexity to these viruses, although please know they are still complex. All right, let's look at RNA viruses. And I want to kind of give you a big picture overview before I bombard you with figures. So RNA viruses are going to need to go through um, RNA replication, which our host cells are not uh, programmed to do uh, because we never have a need to replicate RNA, right? We don't have RNA as our genetic material. Um, so our host, the host cells are used to taking RNA and using it to make protein. That's it. So RNA viruses have to bring their own viral protein called an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And it uses this enzyme to essentially read the RNA that it has and to create more RNA. But because these are viruses, it can't be super straightforward. Whenever a nucleic acid is used to make another nucleic acid. Um, it's kind of built in the opposite direction of the starting molecule. And so we say with RNA viruses, they have a positive sense strand and a negative sense strand, and they just run in opposite directions, okay? And so viral RNA that's said to be positive sense, it runs in a five prime to three prime direction. So jot this down for now, when we talk more about Bacterial genetics, we're going to talk a lot more about what this means. And so you'll better understand viral biosynthesis 
as we talk about processes that the hosts do. Because remember, the viruses are using the host machinery. And so in um, the host cell, RNA that runs five prime to three prime is used immediately to make proteins. Our ribosomes understand five prime to three prime RNA. That's what's compatible with our ribosomes and they can make protein, okay? But sometimes, uh, often, there's antisense strands of RNA which run in the opposite direction, okay? And these, the ribosome cannot use. Ribosomes don't know what to do with RNA that's in this format. And so the, um, they'll have to then use uh, different proteins to convert this antisense strand of RNA into the usable um, positive sense um, type of RNA. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about this in the next slide, but just know it's complicated, y'all. Um, and then double-stranded RNA viruses um, are going to have their own level of complexity. And I don't expect y'all to know the nitty gritty details of all of these RNA viral replication processes, but just get the gist that there's two directions to these RNA molecules. The three prime to five prime never exists in a host cell because we just don't use it. Um, and so it kind of adds that complexity of viruses that they do have to bring some of their own proteins to the show um, in order for this process to happen. So let's look at positive sense RNA viruses. Okay, so viruses that naturally have the five prime to three prime RNA strand as their genetic material. Remember, that's good because that is the, and I'm gonna go ahead and write five prime to three prime again, just because I want this to become familiar to you. Um, the five prime to three prime is what's recognized by our ribosomes and they can automatically start making viral proteins. So that's what you see happening here on the right side of the picture. Okay, so again, notice the virus is attaching and entering and uncoding. And then right off the bat, viral proteins are being made because that RNA is in ribosome compatible forms, okay? But now, um, look at what's happening in this next picture where I have this big box. Notice that the original dark green five prime to three prime positive sense um, RNA has to be converted into the negative strand because whenever you copy a nucleic acid, you can only copy it in the opposite direction. Okay, that's just how the cell's machinery works. And so we, the virus can't just have a positive sense RNA and essentially photocopy it to be more positive senses. That's not how it works. So if a virus has a positive sense RNA, once it's quote unquote copied, it's copied in the opposite direction. So it's made three prime to five prime, okay? And again, that is useless in the cell. We can't make proteins with that. That's not what the virus needs, right? It needs the five prime to three prime. It's just this necessary intermediate because now, the virus can essentially copy this one. And remember, whenever it's built, it's built in the five prime to three prime, which is what the cell needs. This can be used to make proteins, but it can also uh, be used in the maturation step because this is the type of genetic material that needs to go back into the capsid for the fully functional ones. Because remember in here, in this example, these are the positive sense RNAs, okay? And so it's just, there's just this extra step of having to make the antisense um, because that's the way the host cell machinery works. Okay. But eventually they're going to have enough capsid protein and enough uh, viral nucleic acid that they can then spontaneously assemble and leave the cell. So notice here, now we're starting with a negative sense um, RNA. So that means in this example, okay. We're starting with a three prime to five prime. So that's what's gonna to have to be packaged in the newly made virions, okay? So again, just for redundancy's sake, the virus will attach to the cell, enter the host cell and uncoat. And then um, now it's gonna be releasing that negative sense RNA, okay? 
And um, this is a viral proteins that came from uncoding. Okay, they haven't been made yet because remember the ribosome cannot use three prime to five prime RNA. So what happens anytime the host cell is trying to make a copy of a nucleic acid? It's always built in the, um, the opposite direction. So now this cell will be making some five prime to three prime um, RNA, which again is good for making viral proteins, okay? But in this case, the cell needs more antisense because the viral genetic material is antisense, right? It's three prime to five prime. So the only way to get more of that is to then copy this five prime to three prime, right? Because whenever you copy it, it's built in the opposite direction. And so this three prime to five prime that's made, this is going to be packaged into the new, uh, newly made viruses or the viruses that will be newly made. Okay, so again, there's just this extra step of complexity um, because the, the host cell just isn't used to having any type of negative sense RNA in the cell. Okay? That doesn't happen naturally. Now, notice here we're just getting extra complicated. Uh, the double-stranded um, RNA viruses, okay, so um, again, it's going to attach, enter, and uncoat. Um, so sometimes, depending on what the, the specific makeup of the virus is, um, it might have like a, a positive strand with a, an antisense strand, okay? And so in that case, right away, it's got one of each. So it can start making viral proteins from the existing positive sense strand, um, and then it can start copying that negative sense uh, piece in order to put it back into the virus, okay? So again, you don't need to memorize all the itty gritty details of these, but just understand that these RNA viruses have to bring some of their own proteins in, okay? And um, they have to kind of go through these extra steps of making uh, positive sense and anti-sense RNA. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video um, with a quick overview of what the retroviruses do. Um, especially in the light of COVID. COVID is an RNA virus, so is HIV, although HIV is a different type of RNA virus. Um, the, and, but I've seen you know, little memes and things trying to com compare them. And it's like comparing apples to, I don't know, plums, maybe even apples to carrots. Um, but essentially retroviruses are RNA viruses, okay? And so here you're seeing it at step one, attach. Okay, and it is going to then enter um, the cell. Okay, and RNA viruses, because of their complexity, they do code for their own viral proteins, including the two that you see mentioned in this box, reverse transcriptase and integrase. Um, so all of that is gonna enter the cell. Okay, notice the virus is going to uncoat, okay, just like it's supposed to. But then notice what's happening um, in step three here. So it starts off as an RNA virus, but it's gonna use one of its enzymes to make viral DNA, okay? And then that viral DNA, so I'm gonna kind of mark where I'm at right here. Um, so here is where it's making viral DNA. So it ends up right here. And then what happens is it uses another viral protein called integrase to integrate the viral DNA into the host DNA. This is known as a provirus, okay? And it's gonna hang out there for a very long time. This is why HIV is said to be with somebody for life because part of the viral DNA does integrate into the host cell DNA. Now, when things get stressful, um, that viral DNA can uh, come out and it can be used to make more viral proteins, make more viral RNA, and then the viruses can spontaneously assemble and exit the host cell, okay? But there is kind of this, uh, this period where it can just be hanging out inside of the host cell with its viral DNA integrated into um, the host DNA. All right, this is kind of a long video, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one but come back later to learn more about
um, the last step of the viral multiplication cycle and other fun things.